This meeting is being recorded. When we collide, hey, have you, have you heard? Have you heard the Queen of Slim soundtrack? Uh uh, no, oh. no, I have not yet. I have not. I haven't even seen the movie yet. Okay, now that's a whole. Oh my that's god, whole another something. <laughs> whole another something. Um, but the the soundtrack mm -hmm. is hands down super super dope. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Like, go on Apple Music and listen to the Queen of Slum soundtrack. I, um, they got. Do you remember the uh the song um. You should be my soul sister. Yes, yes. That joint is on there. Yeah. Oh, the whole stuff up there too. Yes, that joint is on there. I I, I did an uh, Instagram video of me like singing a song, and they yeah. reposted on the Queen of Slim, um, time, um, Insta story. That joint, yeah. <laughs> Listen to the soundtrack. Okay, all right. I'm gonna do both. I'm the going this weekend to see the movie, but I'm gonna listen to the soundtrack too. All right, so y'all just, y'all get a little sneak peek into a conversation. That's all. Hey, <laughs> how y'all doing? Uh, we are so glad you all are here. Listen, you need to um, share this with, I'm going to go ahead and say it, everybody. You need to share it with everybody, everybody. Um, we are about to disrupt some stuff moving into 2020. Um, and in order to do that, we need to talk to a disruptor. And so I am so excited about this conversation. It's going to be good, y'all. You have, I, I, we're not going to take 10 minutes to wait for you to get somebody going. So we, you got a few minutes. Share this out. I am about to share. And I would love for you to do the same. Let someone know that we're on. And I'll introduce myself and all that good stuff in a minute. Just tell somebody we're on so that they can join this conversation. We're officially supposed to start at 8 o'clock, but we're going to start a few minutes early because I do have some announcements for you. So come on in and share. These are um, opportunities for you to get a sneak peek into real conversations with real women. And we cover everything, business, health and wellness, your finances, your relationships, whatever you have going on in your life, we're going to address it. Um, and we do it as real women. So this is your opportunity to get your whole life together going into 2020 from someone who is serious about being their unique selves in business and in life. You don't want to miss this conversation. All right, so I'm almost done sharing. I just shared it. Awesome. Okay, I got one more share. And then I'm now also, y'all know how this goes. We need you to share, say something to us in the chat. We want you to say hello to us. Let us know that you're here. Um, we're going to have a conversation. So if you have questions, um, you're going to want to send us your questions as well. All right, I'm done posting. And now I get to look and see. All right. I am looking for you all. There we go. I can see you, Sharice. I can see you, Mary. Come on in. You'll slowly make your way in and we'll slowly get started. I see Erica. Hi, how are you all? Come on in. We want you to share this out and let someone know that we are here. We're going to break down for you what it means to be a disruptor. And trust me, you want to be one. <laughs> Well, you just have to understand your brilliance and your shine in order to do so. And so we're going to talk about it. Um, my name is Dr. Trinace Richardson, and I am the founder of Real Women. And we serve women of all races, ages, uh, across the country and abroad. Our goal is to create safe spaces for women to do personal development work on themselves. And we do that through in-person person and virtual sister circles. You can find us in person as it relates to our sister circles in the DC, Maryland and Northern Virginia and Hampton Roads, Virginia area uh, areas. And so every Saturday, uh, except for fifth Saturdays, we have a live 
sister circle happening where you can come and literally join a circle of sisters in a conversation uh, about issues and topics that women deal with. But let's say you're not in D.C., Maryland, Northern Virginia, or Hampton Roads, Virginia. We have an all-access community that you can join to be a part of our virtual sister circle. In addition to that virtual sister circle that happens monthly, you also get access to membership benefits and discounts that are major. We give you access to our personal development institute that houses tons of webinars and workshops and videos. You also get discounts with companies and organizations. And so we really want you to become a part of our all access membership. You can find out about all of that at realwomenrock.org. Again, realwomenrock.org. We get rid of, we get a, uh, go ahead and get over all of our announcements at the very beginning so we don't have to do it at the end um, or in the middle, we don't have to interrupt ourselves. And so we want to make sure that you know about all of the important things that are happening as you are sharing. Hi there, Monica. Hi, Taj. Come on in. We want you to share this out. We're going to start in just a couple of minutes. I want to let you all know that uh, this coming Saturday is a very special Saturday uh, Real Women session in Prince George's County, Maryland, because it is going to be the last one in that particular location. So we're doing a, a culmination one for that location, and you'll want to be a part of that as we end the year uh, in that location. And then December 21st in Northern Virginia, we'll be talking about dreaming and playing. And we're literally going to dream big and then have a lot of fun together. And then January 4th, we have a book anthology coming out and it's called Purpose Pushers, How to Discover and Walk in Your Life's Purpose. And we have 30, uh, I'm sorry, 20 co-authors that have come together and have put together their stories based on their process and journey related to their purpose. They are either still working through their purpose or they're walking in it and learning from it or somewhere in between. You wanna be a part of this book launch on January 4th. It's happening in Prince George's County, Maryland. You can find all of this information at our website. Go to realwomenrock.org. Um, and then lastly, we are in the middle of, and, I'm, and then we're starting, we're in the middle of a purge. Uh, we are, for 21 days, we are purging and decluttering our body, our mind, our spirit, and our physical spaces. If you have not yet joined the purge, then you need to get on realwomenrock.org or go to one of our pages. Um, I'm going to post it again on this site when we get finished so that you'll be able to see it but you want to be a part of the purge because you get an opportunity for 21 days in a community of people to focus in on decluttering, whether it's actual physical spaces or you got some internal decluttering that you need to do. You don't need to walk into 2020 with all of that inside of you, right? Get rid of the unnecessaries before 2020 and let's do that together. All right, I'm ready now, y'all. All right, so Carla is here and I want y'all to say hi to me. Let me know that you're here. Say hello. Um, I want to introduce to you all, and we're starting a couple of minutes early because we got a whole lot of information to share with you. Um, and this conversation is going to be just that good. But let me tell you, not only have I had the honor of walking alongside her for the Spectrum Circle Award, uh, we both won an Innovative Women in Business Award from uh, the Spectrum Circle, uh, but I have watched this woman just I literally travel the world um, and being a blessing to entrepreneurs, especially women entrepreneurs. Um, she is an innovator, a systems disruptor, a business strategist. She has won Entrepreneur of the Year from Technically DC. She's the Minority Female Professional of the Year uh, based on the US Minority Chamber of Commerce. Um, she's listed as 20, uh, one of the 24 rising brand stars in 2018. She's been in the Washington Business Journal, the Forbes um, uh, magazine. She is the founder of Black Girl Ventures. She is a Google guru. Can you say that three or four times? 
at the same time. Um, and she is literally an ecosystem builder, literally helping women build their businesses, not just with talk, not just with lessons learned and experiences learned, but she is helping to, to raise capital so that women who are aspiring or working hard to start their own businesses can do so successfully. I, I can't I can't tell you more. <laughs> I don't I don't know what she's gonna end up telling you after I after I said all because I'm telling you you can go to her website at IamShellyBell.com and be blown away by all of the wonderful things she has done and she has graced us with her presence tonight. Hey Shelly. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This is dope. I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you're here. We've had a whole nother conversation already, but we're going to get them in inside our conversation this time. Thank you for being here. In your own words, um, and don't forget, y'all, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions soon, okay? So in your own words, could you, could you sum up, because you'll say it better than I did, the work that you do? How would you describe the work that you do? Yeah, so Black Girl Ventures, we work to create access to capital for Black and Brown women founders. One of the ways we do that is with a unique traveling pitch competition um, where we have, it's, it's like Shark Tank with an audience, mm -hmm. except that everybody's a shark. So the audience donates to vote for the person that they want to win the competition. And all eight women in the competition get access to capital through that vote. Um, we, the, the person who gets the most votes is who we determine as the winner. Um, and, but everybody in the pitch competition gets access to resources. Ooh! So, so we have heard about VCs, we have heard about investors and angel investors and all these folks. You are literally talking to somebody right now who has put together events and programs and systems and an organization geared toward providing those funds to businesses and organizations. And I just think it is absolutely amazing that you are providing financial capital for black and brown women founders, especially. That's an awesome work. Um, and I and I I'm sure we'll we'll dig into it. I'm sure um, you have yourself been in need of it. I want to make sure our audience is um, is in tune with us. So listen, guys. I want to know what your definition of a disruptor is in your eyes. What is a disruptor? I want you to put in there. What do you perceive a disruptor to be? And I'd like you to talk about it, Shelly, a little bit, because when you say systems disruptor, um, a lot of things come to mind for me. And when it comes to being a disruptor in education, I'm used to that because I'm an educator by trade. And so um, I know what that looks like. But when you talk about being a systems disruptor, what are you speaking about? Yeah, I'm also an educator. So I was a, I was a K-12 teacher for seven years. I taught computer science. Um, that's what my degree is in. So I'm an engineer as well. I, so the systems part, I would like, I've never been a great employee. Like I've always been like, I get into a job and I'm like, this is not working. We need to figure this out. And I'm the person at the meeting is like, yeah, but what if we just did it like this? Um, and everybody thinks it's crazy until we actually do it and it works. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's been times where, you know, when I was running a multi-million dollar workforce development contract, mm -hmm. and I noticed that we weren't hitting our payment points. And I'm like, oh, we're not hitting our payment points because nobody actually understands them. Mm. So I took the information, broke it down into several pieces and created an entirely new process. At first, my boss was like, nah, 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 nah. And then I convinced him. He finally let me do it and it started working. I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things where, like, you see a problem and maybe you see it and it's being solved. Yeah. But you're like, this could probably be better. Mm -hmm. So you inject something in a system that has your unique spin on it. One of the things about what we do at Black Girl Ventures is e people are starting to build ecosystems around the country. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people have really figured out how do we just get capital directly to the people that need it. Mm -hmm. In the VC world, you get caught up, you know, there's a lot of pieces to that. It's not simple. It's not cut and dry. Um, you know, there's a, you know, VCs want to put money in and get money out in a certain amount of time. And that takes a certain kind of business. Yeah. What I've come to realize that, one, not everybody needs VC funding. If you do, you should go after it. 
-hmm. But the way, but the way of the future is going to be a blended capital stack, which is going to be some VC, some debt, some like it's going to be a, a a collection of things because we got to get back to really pushing the business forward. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that people get when they come to Black Girl Ventures is you're also not just pitching to an audience of people while the audience watches and only like a few people get to say what they think mm -hmm. that is actually the mirror of the problem mm -hmm. right so the pro right now black and brown women are receiving less than one percent of venture capital mm -hmm. women in general are receiving less than two percent of venture capital mm -hmm. and and underrepresented founders in general are receiving less than eight percent of venture capital mm -hmm. well that's a lot of money that we're not getting right yeah. And so while we wait for the financial industry to do its dance and, you know, hopefully turn into a more equitable system, what are we going to do to just stay in business? Yeah. And <laughs> some of that, you know, is around getting you access to customers, access to social followers, if that's what you need, access to amounts of capital that you can put into your marketing. Yeah. I want to ask you something because that's so good. I'm wondering for all of us who are up here who are either aspiring entrepreneurs or current entrepreneurs, we would love to be able to crack that code to get access to that larger percentage of money, right? Um, and you have done both. You have not only cracked the code to get access to those larger percentages, but you have flipped the script, disrupted things, turned the table, and brought some funds directly to uh, those of us who may not know what that, what that, you know, that, that rhythm, that password is to get across there. What do you suggest we do as current or aspiring entrepreneurs? What are, what are venture capitalists looking for? Or what is Black Girl Ventures looking for from an entrepreneur or from a business? Yeah. So, with, so in terms of Black Girl Ventures, we look for revenue generating um, businesses. You're under a million dollars, but you are past idea phase. So you should have an MVP and you should actually be in business. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what venture capitalists are looking for, they are look, VCs are looking for people, for businesses that are highly scalable Mm -hmm. um, in a short amount of time. And by short, I mean about five years. Mm -hmm. um, and they're looking to get returns. Mm -hmm. So they're looking to put money in and get money out. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so what you could be doing is thinking about the kind of business you're starting. Mm -hmm. Is your business scalable, right? And scalable is always like an a interesting term in the way we look at it. Mm -hmm. So you want to be getting bigger without necessarily adding more money to getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So the reason why a like a barbershop might not be deemed scalable in the way that a VC would want to look at it is because it is a physical location. Mm -hmm. In order to, in order to get more barbershops, you got to put more money into getting in more real estate in order for you to get more barbershops. Right. Yep. You know, if you think about a tech product, that's not so much the case, right? You, you actually start to lower your costs after you figure out what you're doing and then your cost you to place where it's not constantly getting bigger to produce. So after your product is created, you are now putting things in place where you can get more and more and more people on a platform without adding more and more and more and more overhead. So when you think about scalability. Yeah, this is good. So I'm going to be the guinea pig, real conversations with real women. And I just want to make sure um, that myself and our audience and y'all listen you all do not get this opportunity often. Did I clap every word? Yes, I did. Um, you do not get this opportunity often that you get to talk to someone who oversees and, and divvies out <laughs> funding and capital to entrepreneurs and, and, and women founders. So you really want to make sure if you have a question, if you are the founder of a business, an organization, and you have a question about funding in any way, shape, or form, you want to put that in the chat so that we can help you out. Okay, so real women, and I, I use this as a real life example because of what you just said about scalability and the, the more you grow, you know, your, your expenses don't grow along with them. One, one of the things we have pivoted to do is we are establishing sister circles uh, physically across the country and abroad is the goal so that every woman has access to a circle of sisters. But one of the things we've decided to do purposefully was 
to grow, spend a lot of time growing our virtual sister circles so that we'll have sister circles across the country and ab abroad virtually, which costs us little to nothing to keep those going versus the physical locations that cost as far as rental fees and all those types of things. And so I hear you saying that's the kind of scalability you're talking about. Am I on the right track? Are we moving in the right direction? You're moving in the right direction. I would say, you know, for that kind of business model, like the question now is what is the business model? Yeah. Right. And have you entered in the market in a way that, um, if you're looking at, if you're looking at it from a disruptive standpoint or from that enters into a person's life, mm -hmm. well now like they have to go around you or they have to go through you. So like, if we take a look at like, Ooh. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> so just, I just want to make sure they get this. You just said you want to enter the market in such a way that people don't necessarily have to go around you. They have to go through you. Meaning you, you're the, you're the go-to, you are the point person for whatever that thing is. Right. Right. Okay, so ahead. you say like, a, and, and that could be because you're solving the problem in such a way that is just so inviting to use. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, if you look at like a, um, like a Lyft or Uber, you know, it was like, oh, this is an alternative to a cab. And actually there's a two sided marketplace where like, you can not only, you can, all, you can make money while doing it and you can also participate in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you look at Amazon. Um, Amazon quickly became, is a logistics company, right? Mm -hmm. So like what it's doing is giving you easy access to products from several, from a marketplace um, in a way that is increasing your delivery time. Mm -hmm. okay, so now you became such a matter, they became such a matter of convenience uh, mm -hmm. that people are definitely going like, okay, well, I'll just get it from there mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, I think you in in you know not to like go through your business model too much but thinking about the way there's not there's not a lot of business models that fit into what uh where you're running because you at some point it's going to be courses membership fees live events that's yeah. pretty much where that ends up going yeah um and there's nothing wrong with that because we need more and more convenings like in fact the, the internet is actually driving us to want to convene more Mm -hmm. So, you know, people thought that the internet was going to, oh, we're going to lose connection with each other. No, it's actually making convening a, 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 a way more viable market. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now let's say inside of what you're doing, though, you create um, a platform for people who want to create sister circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's say let's say you create a bucket of tools mm -hmm. where you're like here is the manifest like here is the way here's the design for making a successful sister circle girl right? I, I got that workshop yes ma'am yeah, <laughs> and, and then you put it yeah. in a platform where anybody who wants to create a sister circle mm -hmm. is like i need to go here mm -hmm. get the tools go through the trainings you know whatever that looks like automate it mm -hmm. so that I can get an understanding of how to do. And then you take that and you say, not only does this, does this apply to sister circles, yes, this applies to campus organizations, mm -hmm. uh, after school, um, after school, uh, clubs, mm -hmm. uh, church clubs, yep. you know, like clubs within entity, like entity entities where mm -hmm. the members of the entity, decide to create their own gathering under that under that um, umbrella yeah now you you see what i'm saying now yeah. you have an opportunity yeah it's not relying on you mm -hmm. to get all the people that would be a part of your circle and they have to believe in your thing per se. You. now you're open to the public in several different sectors around the same particular industry topic or lane where now a bunch of people can flood themselves into because it's useful yeah. by a bunch of different people that may or may not be just a sister circle, but yeah. it is any kind of gatherer. Yeah. And, and thank you for that. So, so not all, you helped me personally. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And, and in addition to that, I, I want to hear, I want to repeat what I've heard you say, um, because I, I can see some folks that are on in, in our communities and I know that they have an expertise that they are doing. 
they're doing the work of it, but they haven't thought about how they can help other people do it. And so that's, you know, that's a whole nother loop that you've been so busy doing it and you know it so well and all the information is inside your head. But if you were to craft and write it out and, and, and chart it out and, you know, diagram it out, whatever that looks like, it may be helpful to someone either in that specific lane or in a broader sense. That's what I heard you say that, that now. Well, well, let's, a, let's shift the language a little bit. Okay. Go right? ahead. So in order to be a systems disruptor, you have to create a system mm -hmm. so it's less about you could help somebody that's that's not a, that's not necessarily a point of what of that example the point of that example is that you created a system yes that other people can see themselves using yes in order to fulfill their goals their dreams without you mm-hmm I'm with right? you. I'm with so you. can you create a system? So even like in people knowing things and what they, you know, like you said, they're doing, they're doing the work, they're doing the work. The question is, can you back up and create a system based on the work that you are doing? Yes. So that that work can happen without you, but you have your hand on it. Yes. So you have equity in it. You're yes. taking a piece of it. You're taking transaction fees. You're taking, excuse me, you're taking, you know, product fees you're taking you know you you're taking something off the branding like what does that look like in order to create a system yeah that's and and um thank you for fixing my language because it really is important that we understand literally that we've taught we've entitled this topic systems disruptor because not only is that your expertise but that's what it takes in order to move things into a trajectory where you are the expert and you're able to create and that's something that people can come to you for. And so I, I hear you and I have, I, without knowing the language that you just used, having created literally a, a whole process for both real women and leading with soul, I think, um, I think I'm on the right track. So you're helping me. We got a lot of hellos in here. We got someone from North Carolina saying hello. We've got New Jersey in the house. Uh, we've got some Maryland. So you all, this is Shelly Bell, and she is a Google guru. She has been featured um, in many of, of the business journals and magazines. And what we want to make sure we do is grasp as much knowledge from her as possible. I want to shift. I'll come back to some business questions, but I want to shift for a moment because um, I am in absolute love with who you are. And I, I say that in a whole bunch of different ways. I mean, I remember being at the awards and um, just your unique style. Um, and, it, and it really is, everybody has their own unique style. We just gotta embrace it and, and know ourselves well enough to allow it to shine and not just represent whatever we think is status quo or acceptable. And I, I, I have to believe that in the circles that you run in, you have either been challenged or, mm -hmm. um, or <laughs> provoked in some way to, to um, minimize your style and become more like somebody else. And I, I just wanna know you are unapologetically you and you bring, all of you to your work how have you come into that was it something you always just knew to do or did you just decide forget all of y'all i'm gonna be me <laughs> what did you so at some point i mean it's been an interesting journey and uh thank you for asking that because i think this is uh, something i don't get to talk about as often yeah um you know i i was at, having a conversation with um somebody that i confide in recently and i'm like what is it mm -hmm. you know like i see these other women you know who don't look like me and they're starting these things and they're getting millions of dollars like am i not asking the right people you know mm -hmm. am i am i putting out the right things like i'm because for, my first thought is i always check myself right mm -hmm. like it could be people around and i just haven't asked mm -hmm. and, and i'm coming to realize that a lot of that is the reason why we it's not like you have not because you because you ask not literally, Close right? Do not get fed. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so I'm asking a lot. And so and she said something that I thought was very interesting. She was like, you know, Shelly, you know, people really don't know what to do with you. 
right? Like here you are, like colorful hair, tattoos, you know, but but you're also very knowledgeable, you're you're savvy, you're speaking your truth, but also very in-depth about business. And people have never seen anyone like you. Mm. And they don't, they know, they get what you're doing from a philanthropy standpoint, don't yet get it from the depths of the business standpoint. Mm -hmm. That was so helpful for me because if not, I could play that. Mm -hmm. You know, like I could get, like, that means, you know, I understand that. And and so I would say, like, the, the journey to get here has been, I do feel like my parents have given me a lot of freedom growing up to just like be whoever, imagine, think big. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very colorful childhood in the sense of like books and, you know, um, always like my mom always reading to me and like toys and just um, lots of things to use my imagination. And a lot of what happens is over time, our imagination just gets beat out of us for whatever you know, and not be literally, but it could be just like life, yep. you know, corporations, um, you know, a lot of places where people have, have really like, we smacked up against the wall of imagine, of, of being able to imagine. Mm -hmm. um, I did commit to, so a lot of me like having an understanding of pulling, it, you know, it's so funny because I feel like my entire path mm -hmm. was literally built for me to be here, like the universe, mm -hmm. just like every experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from like even the jobs I've had, mm -hmm. right? Like I, and, and I'm not saying that to say that if you don't feel that way about you, you can't be authentic or be yourself because, mm -hmm. you know, there's experiences that are being dropped into your path on a regular basis to reinforce it, your greatness, reinforce who you are. Sometimes they're muffled. Sometimes we don't hear them. And sometimes we don't reflect in our lives because maybe it, it was hard and we don't want to look back on it. Wow. I do a lot of self-reflection, mm -hmm. a lot. And I, not in a way where I'm always picking myself apart. Yeah. But, and I'm not always stuck on or having like an OCD moment on something that happened to me. Right. I'm just like, well, you know, let me look at my ear. Mm -hmm. Let me look at how I feel about this thing. Like I do a lot of checking in with my body. I meditate. Um, I like candles. I like incense. I listen to music, you know, like I do things to try to get myself out of my head, and keep myself grounded on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and that's been a work. And I just decided, hey, I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. And I like colorful hair. I like tattoos. <laughs> I like who I am. And that came through being an artist, performing poetry, mm -hmm. on stages, writing my story out, getting my story out, um, conversations with people. And just like grabbing every part of life that I can find, it gives me wind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because the world will, you know, some things will come and like knock the wind out of you. And you just got to grab for things that bring the wind back, right? Like, Ooh. you know. Let me, um, you said so much. And this is what you just tapped into is kind of who we're all about because I don't believe that you can stand up and stand out confidently unless you have gone inward deeply and gotten to know who you are. And it takes a lot of work to get to know who you are and to be comfortable with who you are because that, that beating out of us that you talked about, it's really, it could be, you know, for many, many of these folks up here, it could be church expectations, parent, parental expectations, you know, dependent upon the neighborhood or the school or, you know, that you grew up in. Um, all of those things tell you what's expected of you and what, how you're supposed to look, how you're supposed to talk, where you're supposed to go to school, how long you're supposed to go to school, what kind of career you're supposed to have. There are a whole lot of shoulds. We should all over ourselves, you know, when, when it comes to, to expectations put on us. And so it, it makes it really hard to think a unique thought or to, to have um, a unique part of yourself and think it's okay. And so um, that's a lot of the work that we do. And so I've asked in the chat that um, folks, yep, I'm with it, Crystal. I'm coming right back to that point that she just made. I'm coming right back to it. So <laughs> the, um, so the, the idea that, that 
we can tap into our uniqueness and use it for us and not against us. I really want you all who are watching, um, no matter what the topic is, finances, health, wellness, we always end up back here because no matter what you're dealing with in life, if you have not tapped in, as Shelly just said, to who you are and, and what brings you peace and centers you, you're not going to be able to deal with all of that other stuff in a healthy way. So the question in the chat is, um, ha have you tapped into your uniqueness? Yes or no? We're asking you in the chat, have you tapped into your uniqueness? What, what makes you uniquely and unapologetically you? Are you comfortable with that? Or are you still feeling a tug, a struggle in some way because you know what the expectations are and, and you haven't taken the big inhale and exhale to just be whoever that is? Um, and what, the, what Crystal hung on to that you said, Shelly, was that you grab things that bring the wind back. Child. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, and you know, a lot of it is around imagination, you know, and I tell people be like, oh, you're faking it to you, you're faking it to you, I'm faking it to I'm making, no, you're not, mm. there's no, there's no faking it, like, there's no way that you, you're not faking it till you make it, you're making it until you make it more, mm. <laughs> like, all, like, if we can imagine, like, that is, that is what you got to pull on, because everything around you may not actually say the thing that you want to be it might not reinforce that at all you may be in a place that nothing around you is reinforcing your uniqueness everything mm -hmm. around you is trying to press you into this space you have to use your imagination to get out of that space you have to imagine yourself mm -hmm. a different person imagine your freedom imagine if you think about you know i don't want to go to, i don't want to get too deep but i'll just say when you're thinking about like what our ancestors had to do over time. Mm -hmm. They had to have a hell of a lot of imagination mm -hmm. to think that there was something on the other side mm -hmm. that was better than what it is right now. Something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we don't know what it is, but it got to be better than this. Right. So we're going to run for it. We're going to go for it. We're going to imagine, um, you know, the stories that we can read about, see other people. We do a lot of you know, social media is hard because you look at other people's lives yeah. and you can't help but to humanly become somewhat envious or either compare yourself, right? And it's like comparison, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, what if you were looking at all that social media and not saying, dang, what I don't have, but imagining that, oh, that's great. Imagine where I'm going to be when I do the things I want to do imagine if I took this move, imagine if I started my business, imagine if, you know, if, if this was like an example of what can happen when you get the win back. Yeah. Right? Like, oh my gosh. So a couple of folks um, have said, um, you know, they're becoming comfortable with who they are. A couple of very clear no's, I'm not comfortable. Um, and so, um, and then, you know, someone really holding on to you talk, talking about imagining. I want to get back to that in a second. And let me make sure I keep track of time because I'll, I'll keep you here all night, y'all. Um, okay, so, uh, and then um, Addie said, I'm understanding more of my uniqueness, but the tugging is real. Mm -hmm. And um, Z said, I am in a space where I'm restructuring. I like that, restructuring. Um, I, I want to... I want to say something about that imagining that you just talked about because, you know, I, I can, you, you hesitated going deep. I ain't scared. Just letting you know, um, <laughs> just so you know. Um, but I, but I wanted to add to that because I don't even believe. So there are certain things I have never imagined. They have never come to my mind. I've never, ever, never, ever wanted to be a doctor. People will say, I want to be a doctor. That, that never drops into me wanting to be one. So what, whatever I imagine, whatever stays with me, whatever dwells with me, whatever I can't let go of, whatever when I allow myself to wander and be creative in my thoughts and those types of things, when I'm able to imagine it, that lets me know it's possible for me because I don't even believe it would be my thought 
if it wasn't possible for me. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact that there are certain things that other people imagine that I've done, that not me. Like I, that's not what I want. But I believe that because I'm able to, to entertain the thought and dwell with the thought, it means that it's possible for me. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. I mean, you're constantly creating your own reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, your perception is your reality. So whatever you think is real is real. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you think that you can't, then you can. Yeah. If you think true. that you can, then you can. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of can you or can't you. It's a matter of timing. Yes. You know, everything is about timing. It's not there. You can do anything you want. And I, and I mean that. And I don't mean that in like some like pie in the sky. Oh, you can do anything. Like, I feel like sometimes people, you know, if, if the back depths of my story. Yeah. I had my first child when I was 17. Mm. And my mom was like, you going to college, you know, whatever. So I was like, well, whatever. Okay. I was, I was terrible at school. I was not thinking about going to college. Right. Um, but I did I had my second child at uh, 21. Mm -hmm. um, no, you don't look like you have two kids. Huh? You don't look like you have two kids. I have three kids. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and as soon as I had the two, I had Section 8. I got Section 8. Mm -hmm. I was on Section 8 up until I started my businesses. Wow. Even with all the, even with all the jobs I worked. Mm -hmm. I were I, I, even being I worked at the patent and trademark office. I was a patent examiner. Mm -hmm. I worked for um, I worked in workforce development. I was a teacher. Like it wasn't that my job sucked. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I didn't have a degree. It wasn't that I wasn't smart. Like the the system mm -hmm. that we live under does not always provide the best conditions for women and people of color. Well, and you so you're you're. You're figuring it out. Um, it, when I started my business, a couple of things happened. Don't like know and pay attention to your window. Mm. When that window or that door opens, run for it. Woo. Like so, basically, what happened was when the Trump administration took over, mm -hmm. they lifted the reporting requirements. Mm. So you didn't have to report every month, or your rent would go up and down. You only had to report once a year. Wow. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make as much money with this business as I can make because I'm out. I'm not doing this no more. I don't want to be here. I'm going to, without worry of will I next month not make enough to pay my bills, That's I'm awesome. going to focus on making as much money as I possibly could. That's a window, Shelly. <laughs> and I ran for it with all of my might. Yeah. And and I worked myself off of government assistance. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And here's the thing that I realized too. I probably could have done that all along. Mm. I just never felt safe enough. Mm. I just never felt like I had a runway. You know, I never felt like I had a runway of time or finances mm. enough to just pull my like I think too, like a lot of times we're waiting for something. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're waiting, like somebody just give me a chance. Mm -hmm. Somebody give me a runway. Somebody give me enough capital. Mm -hmm. Give me enough time, enough space, enough sleep, enough, like enough love. En like just give me enough so that I can move. And, you know, I, I have a book published in the front of my book. I said, you know, people claim to be waiting on God, but what if you only knew that God was waiting on you? Yep. Mm. And it's like, if you would give yourself enough runway yes, for in forgiveness. Yes. Yes. If you give yourself enough runway and relax, just relax and like, let yourself be human, a person, like let yourself move. Yes. You know, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about like, love yourself. I think that's so like, standard things that people just have started to just say as catchphrases. I'm meaning like, give yourself a chance. Yeah. yeah. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. When other people didn't give you a chance, yeah. try something out, start small. You ain't got to jump out there and quit your job. And ain't nobody saying do all that, but, it, but I don't care if you weave baskets every day. Yep. I was just having a conversation yesterday about 
um, things I'm thinking about advocating and fighting for. And one of them that I, I, I don't like is like this idea of like making under, like what people call your business a hobby, mm. right? Like, Oh, you know, people will minimize you all day. You know how many people say, Oh, you still doing your little, no, whatever? no, yo, no. <laughs> You still doing your little poetry thing? Oh, that, oh, you still doing your little, that little women's thing? Seriously, mm-hmm. this is not little. <laughs> but also this idea of like under a certain amount of revenue mm-hmm. makes it a hobby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's BS. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. You got your business registered at your 225 something dollars uh-huh. a year. Yeah. Yep. You paying your annual fees at 400 something dollars if you in DC. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you paying your taxes. You yep. say, like you taking tax write-offs. No, 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 no. You are a fully functioning entrepreneur. Yes. Can I jump in here? This yes. is so good. And and some some folks are agreeing with you. I realized I I had everything I needed all along. I am the one holding me back. I am disrupting my own status quo finally. I know that's right. And someone said something about mindset. This is so good to me because, you know, we are, I am the answer I've been waiting for, right? In addition to that, to to forgiving yourself, giving yourself enough runway, giving yourself enough grace. Um, In addition to all of those things that are so true, you just said, Shelly, when you started going down of what this piece cost, the $225 for this little piece and the two, some of that, sometimes that's just, that's not, you know, quitting your job. Sometimes that's stop doing coffee, you know, at Starbucks all the time. And and let me tell you, go to Wawa instead of Starbucks. I know some of y'all are Starbucks snobs, but you can go from a $6 cup to a $1 cup. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) So there are certain things that you can do that we can do. I'm talking to us that we can do right now to legitimize for ourselves because it's as legitimate. Our business, our work is as legitimate as we say it is, as we make it. This isn't about anybody else. I love what you just said. This ain't no little hobby. All you just kept keep doing the steps. There are steps to it. And, and so you licensing yourself, you getting the paperwork done, but that, those are all pieces in the puzzle that lead you closer to you actualizing and manifesting all that you're supposed to be doing. And it can be done and there's nothing little about it with what you have right now. What you have in your hand right now is enough for you to get started. And so that is such a, so good to me. Um, I, I want to give you, um, because I, I'm supposed to be letting you go soon. And so I want to make sure I honor your time, but I want to kind of take where we've been in this kind of internal work to, to for ourselves, um, become the unique, unique us that we can be and be a disruptor of the status quo that says who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to be and all of that in order to, to legitimize or do the work that we do in a different way going into 2020. With all of that in mind, we just talked about, I would love for you to share, um, what do you think, for those of us, what, whether our limitation is the money or the resources, or we just need some key pieces of advice moving from 2019 into 2020, what should we be doing? What should we be thinking about? If you had to say, you know, these are the top one or two things you should be doing moving so that you can become not only your unique you and disrupt the status quo about who you're supposed to be, but also to bring it to your business or your work. Uh Oh, did I lose you? I can hear you. I can see you anyway. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, did you hear everything I said? Yeah, I did. I, yeah. If you need to, yeah. I can, I can summarize it, but yeah. No, 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 I got you. Okay. Start to develop a practice of how you get things out of your head mm-hmm. onto paper mm. and into execution or into the trash or just into a notebook. Oh, I like that. Right. So like, I think it's important to ground yourself in any way. And so let me talk about grounding for a second. 
grounding can mean multiple things. It's just me. Well, the way you do it is multiple things, but ultimately it's getting out of your head and into your body. Mm -hmm. The moments when you're in your body are like, you sing your favorite song. You're not thinking about nothing. The lyric, you're not even thinking about the lyrics. All you hearing is the beat. Mm -hmm. You just like, what? you know, you just singing. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, one of the ways I ground myself is like in the shower. So like I do this thing where I'll like kind of turn the water up kind of hot mm -hmm. and just, just watch my body adapt. Mm. And to me, that's something so that makes me feel so resilient in that moment where I'm like, my body can adapt mm -hmm. to multiple kinds of conditions. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, and, and that, to me, that's magical, but it grounds me. Yeah. Another thing, you know, could be running, working out. It could be, you know, you know, things dancing, um, physical movement typically does it because you're like, you're in your body, you're moving around and you're doing those things. It could also be combing hair, it could be putting on makeup, but whatever gets you out of your head mm -hmm. and just into your body. We are so intuitive. And we ignore that gut feeling so much. Mm. So, you know, I would, my one piece of advice is go with your gut no matter what. Oh, I like it. And that. I mean, go with it in a way that I don't care if nobody else get it. I don't care if nobody else understand. Like, you had that gut feeling, go with it. Because that is leading you to where you got to go. That is your guide. That is your North Star. That is your intuition telling you where things are. Mm -hmm. you're not crazy mm -hmm. um the other pieces like i said start to cycle out your ideas mm -hmm. everything may not need to be started right now maybe it's another day right like start to filter through like get things out of your head on the paper mm -hmm. um or onto some type of physical medium like you i have a whiteboard in my room you can do do that you know so i keep things up for a certain amount of time and i erase it mm-hmm um, the next thing I would say is like getting into circles of people who are not like you. Oh, that's good. Um, and really, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a test a little bit of like what you can stay in conversations you want to have, don't want to have. It's, it may be a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but get into some other circles of people that are talking about some other things you wouldn't normally talk about, but maybe you have a common thread there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like change, like shift your circle some. Keep keep, you know, keep some part of your circle, mm -hmm. but also shift into some other circles and have this circle to come back to. So like I love what you're doing with the sister circle because that's a perfect place to like as a, a home base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like why are you going out in the world? You're navigating all these navigating all these different environments. Places like that become like a home base because this is hard work. Yes. Working on yourself is hard work. You want to get to know God, become an entrepreneur. <laughs> hey, you ain't never lied. Never, hey. ever lied. Yeah, so, you know, you want to have a home-based circle that you can come back to. Yeah. And, you know, look to your left and your right. You know, there's a video out there from Issa Rae mm -hmm. where she's talking about, like, people always looking up, like, oh, I need to go there, be like them, reach that. But honestly, the, the people that you sometimes need to collaborate with, talk to, can partner with you, you know, feed you into other things. They're right beside you. That's and you're just not looking at them. Um, I'm working on a master class right now that I'll share with you when I get it done around yeah. how to play the game. But it's using a game of space to, uh, to think through how you build your relationships and how you play with different personality types. I like that already. I'm there. <laughs> I like that. But yeah. And I love, you just said so much. I'm going to let you go, I promise. Um, but your example of your masterclass just wove all of you into that. So your creativity, your business sense, you know, all of that is woven in so that people know that's not just a masterclass. Like you're going to get a piece of Shelly in that because, you know, because she put a piece of herself in there, you know, um, that was really good. I like that. Thank you. Because I didn't, I couldn't have articulated that better. That was a good. Yes, child. I didn't think I thought good. about it that way, but you're right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm with you. I want you got to tell me about it as soon as it's out, please. I will for sure. I will for sure. I'm working on a couple things. That I'm working on a pop. Like so many people keep telling, asking me. Dang, what happened, Shelly?
Hold on, hold on. It's just the sound for some reason. Is it me or you? Child. Okay, there you go. Okay. It's me, it's not you. Okay, go ahead. Um, what you were saying? Oh, working on a few things. People keep asking me to start a podcast, so I'm going to do it finally. Yeah. Um, you can also so go to my website and sign up for the mailing list because in the new year, I'm going to start doing a lot more, just kind of like talking to my community, right? Mm -hmm. Like those people. I mean, I have the whole Black Girl Ventures movement, and that's the thing. Um, but for those who want to get like a more of a, just like some of this direct kinds of conversation, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a little bit of that. Um, a lot of the podcast, um, and and then, like I said, working on a master class where it'll be some paid content online. But I'm, I really want to create some experiences live um, that like pull out my story and like just put it all on the table and just really help people get through. I think you know I feel like that's definitely a part of why I'm here. It's like when, honestly with Black Girl Ventures, the work that I do, mm -hmm. it is unique. Yes. But I'm really clear that my work as a person is to shift perception. Yes. Yes, Shelly. And I'm, I'm putting your, um, your website in the chat and I'm going to make sure I do it right instead of whatever I just did. Um, okay. I got it now. So I'm putting it in there and let me tell you, I, I, my last question to you was, was going to be, so I'm glad you went there to make sure that they had your information so that they would know how to reach out to you because I hear exactly what you just said. And I just, y'all, I just put the absolute right one that'll work in there. www.iamshellybell.com. Go there and check her out and make sure that you are connected by email so that you can become abreast of all the things that she's making available. Because Shelly, you are not just a business example and not just um, the, the philanthropist venture capitalist that pours into to founders, but your story, I mean, some of it of which I did not know until tonight, um, just that inspiration that you can provide from wh what it means to, to do it in spite of your challenges, and then to be who you are, regardless of what people's expectations are, just that whole, and so the conversation that you had with your confidant about, you know, what is it? I'm telling you, I've been having these conversations later uh, lately because I've been to um, a couple of conferences with peers who are, you know, doing wonderful big things and still having the same challenge. Every, at every level, there's a challenge of what's up with this ceiling? You know, like where, where did this ceiling come from? Like, and why is it over my head and not over somebody else's? And and we just come to the conclusion that you know, this is the moment, this is literally the moment where we get to like shatter some ceilings and be like, you know what? Um, I, I just refuse to be under this umbrella. I'm just moving, like I'm disrupting all of it. And when you say I can't move in this circle, that just means I need to create my own. And so you're doing that. I'm just really celebrating the fact that you're doing it. So thank you for being here with us. Um, is there anything else we need to know? I am ShellyBell.com. Do you need us to go anywhere else to find you? Follow me on Instagram because I like Instagram. Instagram is my favorite platform. So I don't do a whole lot on um, Facebook mm -hmm. like I used to. So I mostly focus on Insta story. So mm -hmm. like follow me on Instagram. It's at I am Shelly Bell. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as well. I mean, anywhere that's your outlet of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so Facebook, I'm not Facebook, but Twitter and Instagram is I am Shelly Bell. On Facebook is The Shelly Bell mm -hmm. on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, but I do a lot of my story on Instagram. That's mostly the place where I'm doing the most talking or showing my life or while I'm traveling and things like that. Um, so definitely follow me there. And like, hopefully we can do something together with real women. Um, that's like an in-person I would love to do that um, in the new year. Nothing but a word. That's done. 2020 done. We just got to figure out when. Um, thank you so much. Some, Sandra said the best way to end this. She said, Shelly Bell is amazing. 
So excited to see all the awesome things happening. And you uh, got, thank you, Sandra. A whole lot of hearts and loves in here. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are here every Tuesday um, to talk. We just have real conversations. We give you a sneak peek into some real conversations with real women. We hope to educate you. Um, we hope to enlighten you. And we really do want to touch you um, in, a, in a place that allows you to feel like you have been empowered in some way. And so that's what's happened tonight. Um, I'm really grateful for you being here. We'll be back on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Don't forget to go to realwomenrock.org so that you can find out all of the wonderful things that are coming up this month and next year. Y'all take care. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>